The HRDC's plans to put a temporary warming shelter in a residential neighborhood have been put on hold. I'm Gabby Krevit and I'll have the details for you coming up. And a nonprofit group is literally taking to the sky to rescue dogs. How it works and how it got started, that's all coming up. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Monday. It is 6.30. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. Matt Elwell did weather last night, so you're doing weather this morning. Correct. It's a beautiful game of musical chairs. That's exactly what it is, and yes. it's uh, my turn. I have, still have a chair, so yes. <laughs> for the meantime. Music just stopped playing, so it's time to start talking. 6.31, <laughs> take a look outside, Missy. Uh, cloud cover is going to be the story for today. We do have some winds to talk about. There's your current temperatures out there right now. Uh, Dylan looking at 16 mile an hour winds, 14 in Ennis. White Sulphur seeing gusts up around 28. Livingston gusts around 33. Big Timber. Uh, 50 degrees, but 40 mile an hour gusts of wind over there in that area. So just be alert for that. A new system blowing through, bringing some winds with it and some clouds. Temperatures in the low 50s today under those gray skies for both Butte and Bozeman. Struggling to get to 50 today in the Butte area. But uh, boy, that's going to feel like a heat wave by the time we get into the middle of this week. Let's see, I have that detailed forecast in 10 minutes. Thank you for that, Chet. No new for you this morning. Billings police are investigating an early morning shooting that sent a 17-year-old male victim to the hospital. Billings police say the victim was shot twice, but his injuries appear to be non-life-threatening. The call came in around 2.30 in the morning with reports of gunshots at 1018 North 25th Street. Police are checking the area for evidence and interviewing witnesses. So far, there's no word on a suspect or suspects. Police say it is an active crime scene and still under investigation. And the Human Resource Development Council has been talking with residents in a South Bozeman neighborhood about the possibility of opening a temporary warming shelter in the area. MTN's Gabby Krevit reports on how the shelter plans are now on hold. The Human Resource Development Council purchased a home in South Bozeman last month to potentially serve as the overflow location for the warming center. But those plans have been put on hold. The vast majority of the people in the neighborhood are, are grateful that it was slowed down. The potential overflow location off West Ridge Drive would serve a specific purpose. It will be women and families, uh, it will be seasonal, and it will be temporary. And, um, it's not our long-term plan to use that facility in that capacity. But some neighbors have pushed back. Generally speaking, obviously, we've talked a lot about the proximity to the elementary school, which is less than 100 yards away. And so there are some safety concerns there. The HRDC has formally requested more time to review public comments and to revise their management plan. You know, our goal is to be part of the neighborhood and be part of the solution. And so any concerns that are voiced that um, we can address either through our management plan or how we're operating the site, we absolutely want to do that. Christ the King Church will serve as the overflow location for the warming center while the HRDC holds its plans and waits to receive the special use permit needed from the city. The HRDC says they plan on holding another public meeting in the future, but many neighbors stand unflinching, saying it's a matter of location, not a matter of lack of compassion. The fundamental reasons why, uh, again, the majority of the people in this area disagree with this location can't be changed. You can't change the location of the school. You can't change the intersection. You can't change the fact that people aren't made to stay here and that there's no public transport within a quarter mile. It really just is the least ideal location I could probably think of. In Bozeman, Gabby Krevit, MTN News. Now, while the plans have been put on hold, the HRD sa HRDC says they are still taking questions and feedback and they're still evaluating alternative site options. And the Bozeman City Commission will meet tonight and decide whether to adopt the Community Housing Action Plan, which is looking at community housing needs over the next five years. The housing assessment study reported that between 54 and 6,300 housing units are needed in the next five years to address the current shortfall for residents and for the workforce. The city has been working on plans since April and a draft was released last month. Some of the main objectives of the plan include ensuring community housing serves a full range of income, producing housing at the rate that at least matches a job and the job growth, and having no net loss of existing houses for people in certain income brackets. Now the meeting will begin tonight at 6 at City Hall. And Montana Supreme Court Justice Lori McKinnon announced five months ago she was not looking forward to another potential partisan campaign and that she would not run for re-election next year. But yesterday she told MTN News she's changed her mind and she's all in for the campaign. She told MTN News she decided partisanship was not a good reason to give up on the job 
And she was reinvigorated after attending a judge conference in Washington, D.C. over the weekend. And as she put it, they're pouring a little cement down my spine. The 59-year-old McKinnon is usually considered part of the conservative wing of Montana's close, uh, closely divided seven-member court, but says she sees herself as a nonpartisan justice who applies the rule of the law. McKinnon's re-entry makes the race for her seat a three-person affair, joining attorneys Mike Black of Helena and Pimar's Scott of Missoula. And here's an interesting one for you. Rescue dogs and their owners came together in Polson yesterday to celebrate their adoption stories. MTN's Megan Mannering reports. Each of these dogs was once on track to be euthanized. Their previous animal shelters didn't have the space or resources to care for them. But through a program called My Dog is My Co-Pilot, these pups got a second chance. Dog is My Co-Pilot is a nonprofit organization that will fly those dogs that need relocated so that they can get adopted instead of euthanized. Peter Rourke is the founder and pilot of My Dog is My Co-Pilot. And with four rescue dogs of his own, his passion for animals led him from his previous work as an orthopedic surgeon to his current position. After I retired from medicine, um, I started flying animals. And recently we transported our 13,200th animal. And today, Lynette DeFord, president of Lifesavers Animal Rescue in Polson, is calling for a special celebration. We're having a little reunion um, for all of the dogs that came to our rescue, Lifesavers Animal Rescue, by way of Dog is My Co-Pilot. One of the lucky little guys being celebrated is Trooper. And Trooper had actually been run over and shot by his owner who was trying to get rid of him. Through the help of My Dog is My Co-Pilot and Lifesavers Animal Rescue, Trooper has found his forever home. So we saw Trooper on Lifesavers Animal Rescue's webpage, and um, he looked, it was just pitiful. He was all stapled up, and I thought, I gotta have that dog. And we heard the story, and it broke our hearts. We already had two black labs, but um, we just wanted to rescue and give him a chance. And he's been the best thing that happened to us. In Polson, Megan Mannering, MTN News. Well, a lot of happy stories there. 6.38 here on your Monday morning and Eugene's Pizza in Glasgow has a very loyal fan base. But after a statewide competition, the owners discovered their pizza wasn't just a local favorite. Here's another preview under the big sky. Under the Big Sky is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Vein Clinic and Markovich Real Estate. Montana's Best Pizza Contest, that was quite a deal. My wife started saying, hey, have you voted yet? I'm like, well, then I thought I better take a better look at it. So I started paying attention to it. And it was a, just a giant Facebook contest. They kind of tagged it along with the Final Four basketball finals. I was actually at home. I think I was doing the schedule or something. All of a sudden, my phone just started going crazy. You know, like, boom, 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 boom. So I, I looked down and we'd won the 2015 Montana's Best Pizza Contest. You know, we were pretty happy about that. Pretty humbling, because that's just a neat deal. I was kind of hoping they wouldn't do it again because I wanted to go out the reigning champion, you know? Well, then they decided to do it again. I put on Facebook, I said, all right, Eugene's fans, we need all the support we can get. And they pulled through for us, and we got voted Montana's Best Pizza 2016. You know, at least we can say we're voted Montana's Best Pizza two years in a row. So I think that's a pretty neat thing. I think it says a lot for us. It says a lot for our fans. It was sure nice to have people vote like they did because we've had people that travel and still come back and say this is the best pizza that they've ever had. And people that even live elsewhere, in fact, in big cities will come and say this is still the best. And I think it has a lot to do with the dough and sauce. I truly think it's the best pizza I've ever had in my life. But, you know, I couldn't sell it if I didn't believe it. I have a really hard time selling something that I'm not proud of. And I'm very proud of what we sell and what we do. I still love it. So being voted Montana's best pizza is quite an honor. said it before, but I'll say it again. We'll be the judge of that. That's it. We'll She's right, though. It is about the dough and the sauce. It is about the dough and the sauce. Topping, topping self-love. And the fact that they 
cut it into squares. That uh, gets I me. I know too. you and I have talked about uh, that. Before. That gets me. <laughs> we do have to take a quick break. Stay with us in a moment. We are going to check on a story an Olympic legacy finally being recognized. It's been more than two and a half years since an Olympic bobsledder's death, and now he and his teammates will be awarded a medal. That story for you in a moment. But first, we check in with Tony DeCopel to get your headlines coming up at 7 on CBS. Good morning ahead on CBS this morning. CBS News uncovers a potential pay for play scheme involving President Trump's ambassador nominee to the Bahamas. Jim Axelrod investigates whether diplomatic posts are for sale. And we'll take you 250 feet above the forest floor to see what scientists are learning about, about climate change from atop the giant sequoias. We'll see you at 7.